Hello again, I'm Mr. Cannell. In our last lesson, we were learning how to express fractions in their simplest form. I left you with these fractions to simplify. Did you have a go? What did you need to do? First, we need to identify the highest common factor of the numerator and the denominator. This is quite easy for the fraction 728 because I know that 7 is a factor of 28. The denominator. So next I need to divide the numerator by 7 and the denominator by 7. This gives me 1 quarter, which I know is the simplest form of the fraction because it's a unit fraction. It's a bit trickier to identify the highest common factor for 4 fourteenths because I know 4 isn't a factor of 14. 7 is a factor of 14 it's bigger than 4, so it can't be a factor. I'll try 2, because I know that 2 is a factor of 4 and a factor of 14. I divide the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2, and I get 2 sevenths. Now, I need to remember to check if 2 sevenths is the simplest form of a fraction. So we need to think, are there any common factors of 2 and 7? Well, there's only one. So 2 sevenths must be in its simplest form. Remember that when we simplify 4 fourteenths to 2 sevenths, we're preserving the proportional relationship between the numerator and the denominator. The size of the fraction doesn't change. 4 fourteenths and 2 sevenths are at the same point on the number line, like we saw in the previous lesson. Sometimes the hardest bit about simplifying fractions is the last part, checking whether a fraction is in its simplest form. Let's practice that a bit more. Here are some fractions. Let's look together and see if we can work out how I should sort them into the Venn diagram. Well, straight away I'm thinking 3 fifteenths is not in its simplest form. Can you think why? That's right. I've spotted that 3, the numerator, is a factor of 15, the denominator. So if I divide them both by 3, I'll get a unit fraction. Remember, we can't simplify unit fractions any further. What about 9 seventeenths? 9 isn't a factor of 17, and they're not in the same times table. In fact, I can't think of any times table where 17 is a product, except the 1 times table and the 17 times table, and they don't help me here. So 9 seventeenths is already in its simplest form. Let's look at 15 thirtieths. That isn't in its simplest form either, and there are a few different ways I can think about it this time. Firstly, look at the vertical relationship. 15 it's a half of 30. So I know that I can simplify 15 thirtieths to one half. I've also spotted that 15 and 30 are products in the same times tables. The three times table, the five times table. And finally, the numerator 15 is a factor of the denominator. Now it's your turn. Pause the video and sort these fractions into the Venn diagram. Are they in their simplest form or not? Did you have a go? I hope so. Let's see if you sorted these fractions in the same way that I did earlier. What about 5 fifteenths? Did you spot that 5 is a factor of 15? The numerator is a factor of the denominator? What will that give us? That's, right. That's going to be a unit fraction, isn't it? So not in its simplest form. The next one was 16 28. Hmm, a bit trickier. 16 isn't a factor of 28, but they do have some common factors. 2, 1, obviously. 4. 4 is going to be the highest common factor, so 16 28 is going to go into the not in its simplest form circle too. Now, two fifths. 
Who has to put two fifths into one of the circles? Sometimes, when we use a Venn diagram, we put things on the outside of the circles if they won't go into one of the sets. Can I put two fifths on the outside? What do you think? But with this question, it's either in its simplest form or it isn't, so it has to go in one of the circles. The highest common factor of 2 and 5 is 1, so it's already in its simplest form and it goes here. Is that what you found? OK, here's another challenge. My friends sorted these fractions earlier, but one of them is in the wrong place. Can you spot which one it is? Pause the video and have a think. We're going to use these sentence stems to help explain our thinking, so you might want to practice saying them either in your head or out loud. I'll start with the fractions which I think are in the right places. 15 over 45 is not in its simplest form because 15 is a common factor of the numerator and the denominator. 6 eighths is not in its simplest form because 2 is a common factor of the numerator and denominator. So 9 24 is the one that's in the wrong place. 9 24 is not in its simplest form because 3 is a common factor of the numerator and denominator. Both 9 and 24 are in the three times table. So let's move it to its correct place. In this lesson, your practice activity will look like this. The fractions have already been simplified. You have to work out which numbers are missing. You'll need to look for the connections between the numerators or denominators that have already been given to you. In the first example, we know that the numerator is one. But what's the denominator? I know to get from 12 to 1, I need to divide 12 by 12. Remember, when we're simplifying, we're not changing the size of the fraction. So I need to keep that proportional relationship between the numerator and the denominator. I have to divide the denominator 36 by 12 as well. And that gives me a denominator of 3. The simplified fraction is one third. Pause the video now. Have a go at the other two examples for yourself. What did you notice? Did you get the connection between the denominators in 21 over 28? 28 has been divided by 7 to get 4. So the numerator 21 must also be divided by 7, which is 3. 21 over 28 simplifies to 3 quarters. In the final example, we are already given the simplified fraction 2 thirds, so we need to work a little bit differently. The denominator 12 must have been divided by 4 to give 3 in the simplified fraction. So I'll need to multiply the numerator 2 by 4 to give the missing numerator, which is 8. Check it. 8 twelfths is equivalent to 2 thirds. 8 twelfths simplifies to 2 thirds. The highest common factor is 4. The numerator and denominator could both be divided by 4. Here are the practice activities I want you to do for next time. Remember to look carefully for the connection so that the proportional relationship between the numerator and the denominator stays the same. At the bottom, there's a much trickier challenge for you to try. Thank you for your hard work in this lesson.